Hey everyone, um, I want to do a video on uh, the parable of the vineyard, um, which can be found in uh, Matthew 19, I think, either Matthew 19 or 20. Um, over the years, I had a hard time, you know, I struggled with that parable to really understand what it meant. I mean, I understood what it meant, but to really understand the moral and for it to really penetrate in my heart and discernment. And I read it tonight and um, I think I finally understood it. Now, I don't, this isn't going to be some scholarly video. So I'm just going to paraphrase and go off the top of my head. Um, Basically, the parable of the vineyard is um, the owner of the field who represents God, um, hires workers, and some have worked all day in the field, and others have worked maybe a mere hour or two. And at the end of the day, they all get paid the same. And the ones who've worked longest start grudging um, you know, think they deserve more pay than the ones who have only worked for a few hours. And, um, and that's understandable. I think this applies in these latter day times that, um, for those who've been called, you know, the elect, the called out assembly, whatever, um, some of us have been working and walking with the Lord almost our whole lives, for decades. And um, others, for, like me, only a couple years. And, and there might be somebody that gets saved tomorrow and does maybe one video on YouTube and then, you know, maybe judgment will come. And that's it. That's their... That's their body of work that they gave to the Lord. And we could very well expect them to get the same reward as for someone who's been working for the Lord for decades. According, that's what the Word of God says. So why, why should we not grudge? Like, what is the point of this? The way this was able to sit in my heart was because this generosity of God, of God giving the same reward or the same amount of pay to somebody who worked for a mere hour as compared to somebody who worked for hours, although that seems not fair, but that generosity in God should not be grudged over, it should be embraced. We should be um, rejoicing and favoring God's generosity. Because, of course, we would want that generosity onto us somehow one day. As it has been given onto us since we are all in this position to begin with. And, um, of course, they hit me with forgetting what I wanted to say. But also, it could be taken another step further. Um, if you were ever put in that position where you felt like you, you know, have gone through so much for the Lord and somebody who has gone through very little um, gets the same amount of pay, so to speak. Well, if you're in that position where you feel you've gotten gypped or whatever, um, that's a hidden, that's a hidden spiritual blessing, because that that's a blessing in humility. You know, because as the first will be last, the last will be first. You know, we learn about even in our practice and our spiritual growth, and even in the universal laws, in everything, and also in even in the Chinese call it Taoism. 
Um, you know, you could, for example, by being the holiest is to not be so holy. You know, that that's what Taoism teaches. And, you know, in order to govern and rule over people is to not rule over them and to not govern them. Um, this vortex is, you know. So if we're humbled by the Lord in such a way where we feel we've gotten ripped off or whatever, that that's a huge spiritual blessing. That humility is a spiritual blessing. Because that humility in maybe being cast into the shadows or whatever um, gives us huge spiritual growth and an individual strength that, um, that well, a higher stature is just lower than. You understand what I'm saying? Um, yeah. So, I mean, you know, the universal laws and polarity and um, everything, you know, every, all spiritual teachings and practices teach this, this kind of vortex and, um, you know, this is why God chose the foolish things to confound the wise, why the weak things to shame the strong. It, this is just how it works, you know. Um, God works through Taoism a lot of times, it seems, you know. Um, so anyway, that that's kind of my analysis in the parable in the vineyard. Um, I have a lot of background noise, so I don't know how this video is going to come out. Um, and I hope this was helpful and understandable. So, you know, if if you are humbled in such a way... Remember that that gives you a greater strength that is unmatched and an inner personal growth that that cannot be received unless you are humbled, you know? So, yeah, so I think it goes further. So, you know, because we, it's an important parable to understand because maybe we should be expecting that, you know? I don't, we don't know what's coming, you know, and... You know, the scriptures say a lot of people who are asleep, God is going to awaken on the last day, you know. So we don't know who's who. You know, um, you know, as far as greatness in the kingdom and all that stuff, and we shouldn't be concerned with that anyway. I mean, you know, whatever the Lord's will is, is the Lord's will. But if we're ever put in this position, because it is understandable, you might be able to Begrudging or something, I I could certainly be susceptible, susceptible to something like that. So, um, it was important for me to understand this and wrap my heart around this, and that's the way I did it. You know, um, you know, embrace and encourage and celebrate. That's probably the proper word. Celebrate God's generosity onto others, and also if we are humbled in such a way. That gives us an individual greatness and an individual spiritual strength that most people will not have. So um, that's my video. I hope this helps. Okay, good night, guys. God bless.